Hi, it's Bridget. Welcome to Above Life channel. This video is a bit unique. It will not be a channeling conversation, but rather it will be a conversation about something that will help to support you as a spirit living in a human body. And so this whole week, you will see videos from me where I will share intended to create support for you and encourage connection. Again, the purpose of Above Life Spirit is to inspire your spirit and fill you up with hope because this is your life, so live it. I hope this week these videos will help inspire you to live. All right, so today I'm actually going to respond to a question. Do you guys know, recognize that I actually read your comments now? I know, I know, sometimes on YouTube world, it's like bizarro land, and there are some kind of nasty comments. So please just ignore those, you guys, and focus on the positive, focus on the good, and there are some really great value-added comments that are out there on, on the videos that I've shared. So thank you for those. I appreciate the thoughtful comments. Now, one of the questions that I got in a comment that I read was about how to, let me see if I can get it right here. Um, the person asked, why is it that I talk about feeling or sensing some spirits in a different way, wherein some souls, why are some souls not totally crossed over? Like, what does that mean, Bridget? When you feel somebody as a spirit in the afterlife, as a medium, as I'm describing, feeling their spirit, and they don't really feel like they're totally spirit, what does that really mean, Bridget, is the question I got, which is a fantastic question. And I think, I'm pretty sure it was probably related to one of those MJ videos. And y'all know if you watch the MJ, the Michael Jackson playlist, you know that I, I was a Michael Jackson fan, like mega fan, moonwalking and everything. Thank you very much. I'm not about to show you that now because I'm a little rusty. But the MJ videos I shared in channeling I shared about how he felt his spirit at the time that I channeled him really felt like he was kind of in not fully embracing the afterlife. Now, I am always cautious about the way that I describe that particular energy. If there is a spirit that I'm channeling, whether it's through a private session with someone, I'm being a medium because that's my job, that's what I do, and I'm talking about um, someone who used to be a person and is now in spirit form and they have left their body and so they're in spirit so I should be able to connect with them in the afterlife as a spirit which I do and I can but sometimes they don't feel fully spirit now why is that there is a lot of reasons you guys I have been doing this for 14 years so I've had a lot of dead people experience and in a lot of different stages and Truly, it's a choice. It really goes down to that whole free will concept when we have a mind and a, and a connection to our own personal individual choices that God, source, creator, universe, whatever our source power is, has created within us free will, freedom to choose, freedom to have a choice. We are the masters of our, our decisions, our fate. We really are. And the fate is determined based upon our choices that we make. And I'm not talking fate like you're good or you're bad. I'm talking we create, manifest, make life ourselves, and we co-create with the energy of our spirit. And in the afterlife, your spirit has choice. And sometimes people have not I look back on their human lives and they feel really judgmental. Have you ever felt judgmental about yourself? Have you ever had your self-critic show up with self-doubt? Have you ever been hard on yourself? Have you ever been in those states, like felt really negative, really down on yourself? Well, when you go into afterlife, when you are the spirit of a person who has felt like that in their human life, maybe with good reason, maybe they were kind of jerks, let's be honest. There are people who have been abusive. There are people that have abused their power. There are people that have been just incredibly, incredibly um, irresponsible is like a minimal word to use, but has created a lot of pain, a trail of pain. And they recognize when they leave their human body and they become full spirit, they recognize that the things, some of the choices they made in their lives were not things that they would ever want to make again, or they would 
they recognize the waste, kind of the wasted choices, you know? And it's not about regret or remorse. I don't want people to live life because they're scared of making a bad choice or scared because they're gonna do something bad or wrong. That's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about when the spirit leaves the human experience and looks back on the human experience and says, okay, so these are some points in my life where I could have chosen differently. And I'm not looking at this and having a review of my life so that I can feel bad. I'm having this so I can let go and forgive myself. The spirit must forgive themselves and the forgiveness detaches them from that human experience, whether they created trauma or they were the perpetrator of crime or, or pain or irresponsible decision-making, let's say. Um, they, they have the choice to forgive and then let go of that part of that life moment. And sometimes spirit doesn't do that very readily. It can take some time. Spirit needs to heal sometimes too. And so what happens is, and you guys all describe this too, it's so cool. I've seen it multiple times in the afterlife when I'm in session. And, and now with famous people too, I've seen it a few times where a spirit that has recently passed over, like recent as in the last three months or so, sometimes feels a little more people-like, human-like, than they do spirit-like. And it's simply because they're in the process of evolving and fully transitioning into spirit doesn't mean they're not in heaven. It doesn't mean they're stuck. It doesn't mean they're not in the afterlife. It doesn't mean that. It doesn't mean they're agonizing. They might be, but it doesn't necessarily mean that. Do not assume that. But I can see a lot of times what happens is they go into like a healing, like when you have a surgery and you need care, that you can't just get at home. You stay in the hospital for a while and you're cared for. And then sometimes after the hospital, while your body is healing, and you're probably trying to get through those nights at the hospital, you know, it's not a pleasant experience, but maybe you're trying to, your body needs to heal. Then maybe after that, maybe you go to a rehabilitation facility because it's like a hip surgery or knee surgery or something. And I need to work on learning, teaching that knee how to walk, that hip how to walk again, or find your balance again, or whatever it might be. You go to another place to help get the help you need for that. And then eventually you're at home and then you're doing some things like you normally do, but you're not going to run a marathon with a brand new knee. It takes a progression of healing and support from others. And so what I see in the afterlife with spirit sometimes is that they enter into, um, they enter into a place kind of like that, like a hospital, like a hospice for spirit, but not to leave their body not not to end life, but to embrace eternal life, to understand what that is and, and how to do that kind of a thing. And they might learn, they might take classes, they might, you know, learn how, it might be like getting, you know, in a rehab a rehabilitation facility or uh, um, a care center, like a nursing home kind of a scenario, but for spirit to learn how to fully, more fully embrace the afterlife in an eternal way and to heal through some of their human stuff if they need to do that. And so that's, I've seen that a lot and that's a good thing, you guys. And let me just say, spirit chooses. So they don't choose because um, they're bad. And so like even people that do commit horrific acts, you don't need examples because you can figure it out yourself. Horrific things as people. In the afterlife, they get to choose about healing. They get to choose about that process of, they can just go right into the afterlife. I know that's gonna piss some people off, sorry, but they can. They can release the, any guilt or anything that they had and it's not about repentance and punishment and forgiveness from other people and their victims. It's about themselves and the forgiveness within themselves and if they can live with themselves in the afterlife, in the eternal life. And oftentimes they might think they can, so they leave and they're like all in the afterlife and all of a sudden they're like, wait a minute, I'm in the afterlife like a kid going off to college and has no idea how to manage a checkbook, how to pay the grocery bills, how to manage their study time for classes. I mean, they have no idea what to do. And so then they get help, help from spirit guides, help from mentors in the afterlife, all that kind of stuff. And so everybody has equal energy choices in the afterlife. And I know that's not, doesn't feel very good because you kind of feel like, well, what about karma? Well, that's a whole nother video. Right now, we're talking about the energy of spirit and why I describe some spirits as feeling a little different, not like they're not totally in the afterlife, but they're, they're spirit. 
It's not because they're stuck, they're not being punished, they're making a choice. And sometimes spirit can be misguided and feel so connected to the people they left behind that they don't want, they don't know how to let go of the pain and the connection that connects those, those energies is painful and not loving. And that's what grief is, pain, but it's, it's there because of the absence or the memory of the loving piece of it. So grief and love are actually kind of intertwined and interwoven, and it's kind of messy at first after the person has, has died and moved into the afterlife. And sometimes the afterlife spirit definitely will serve the human spirit while they're grieving. And so that's why you feel the essence of the energy of the person, not because they're haunting you, not because they're, they're, gonna, they're stuck and they're not going to heaven, not because of that, but because they just, they feel an in incredible connection. And so there's a process that we can do as people to consistently and continuously heal, to consistently relieve ourselves from pain of grief, relieve ourselves from past trauma and experiences that, that arguments or disagreements or even violent experiences with other people, trying to come to terms with a father who was abusive or, or a brother who mistreated you horribly. And there's so many different degrees to this, I don't need to explain it, you can, identify perhaps with some of these different degrees, varying degrees of confusion that kind of happens after somebody dies. It's like this confusion, like I loved them, but I hated them for what they did to me or how they hurt my mom or they hurt my sister or they hurt my brother or what have you. And then trying to come to terms with all these confusing emotions can be challenging. So the spirit in the afterlife may serve, try to serve or be in service to the family or the one who is grieving. And sometimes that can be complicated. This is a time when you really should contact somebody who's a medium and, and a grief counselor, grief counseling, or even going to a counselor to talk through how you're feeling, not to get over it, but to move through it, to honor and witness the process of the grieving experience of the loss of a loved one is important. You need support. You need support as the human being that you are. You need that. And then you can also talk to a medium. But if you talk to a medium, a good medium will also recommend or be sure that you're talking to a grief counselor or they will suggest you talk to a counselor because it's not just a one-time thing and you're fine, you're done. It's not like, oh, I'm all good now, okay. It's not like you're, you know, it's not like you have just have a little headache and you're taking some, some medicine for it and then you're fine. It's not like that. It comes back, you know. Grief is a process. Healing is a process as well. And so lots of information here in this video, but I wanted to share with you, I think it's really important that you understand that just because I describe a spirit as feeling different, like a little bit closer to their body or closer to the human experience versus closer to the afterlife, it doesn't mean they're stuck. It doesn't mean they're in pain. It doesn't mean they're being punished. Please, please never think that a spirit is being punished. And even though there are some spirits that you probably want to be punished as people, it doesn't work like that in my experience thus far. Now, I've only been doing this for like 14 years. So I mean, you never know, something new could show up or I could have a different kind of experience, but I'm, I'm sharing with you what my experiences are and what I know. And if that changes, I'll certainly let you know, but keep an open mind and use your own discernment as well. But please don't worry about spirits like Michael Jackson, when I talked about him in the afterlife, he's got some stuff he's working on. And he has spirit guides as well that are helping him and he will, he will get some help that he needs to have. And so, but that's his choice, you guys. It's his choice, you know, and I've talked to him multiple times and I haven't shared all the things I've talked with him, the sessions I've had with him, because that's just not, I don't feel like I need to be doing that. It's just a kind of a different process, you know? Um, so I hope this is interesting to you and I hope you appreciate it. And I hope you know that I read your comments. And so thank you very much. This is Bridget at Above Life Channel. Remember the purpose here is to inspire your spirit and fill you with hope, to give you that courage to just live your life. Just live it. Thank you so much for being here. I appreciate it very much.